<laughs> All right, brothers and sisters and YouTube family, hope you guys are being blessed. So, excuse me, I know I look a little bit weird without my scapular. Or maybe I feel like that with myself, but I was washing yesterday and I forgot to bring it down from town. Um, but so I just want to share once again my readings this morning. And my brother James is here. He's back, guys. Um, but he's just kind of resting and being re and recovering from his sickness as well. And so we were just talking uh, before this video about a couple of things the Lord's putting upon our hearts and sharing with one another. And I thought to myself, I should be recording this, but it's too late. But it's okay. We'll have many more times uh, with him and all the other all the other brothers who are here. So this morning, um, I feel like I had breakthrough with the Lord, just a really inner peace. As I mentioned before, the um, a couple of days ago with you guys, that um, the enemy would just bombarding me with so many thoughts of foreboding fears of the future images and situations and circumstances that could possibly happen and i caused myself to i haven't felt that way in a long time where just like i could not cast down these lies i tried them just pop up again these thoughts again just pop up again and i would try and try to point even at times having me tears i'm like lord lord let me cast down because the enemy just tell me once again i think walking with the lord you know it's difficult and as you will come to find out when the readings he gave me is trusting that even when things are bad I have to have confidence in his goodness and trust that it actually is for our good. So hence, that's where I think the enemy comes in with that lie. You know, the the enemy, he loves to, the way he lies, that he'll take a bit of truth and skew it in just, just an increment to the point where um, it can become believable. And so what he would just continue just to remind me or just show me these images is if, oh, these are sufferings. These are crosses that God's going to allow in your life. And I'm just like, it would just... It was overwhelming with, with fear, you know, and insecurity. And I'm just like, Lord, and I probably was like, okay, Lord, if this is your will, you know, I trust you. But I'm like, no, 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 this can't be. Because I remember, and I think it was yesterday, when all these thoughts were coming. And I was like, Lord, please. I had to cry, like, God, please help me. And I just felt in my heart, he reminded me. He's like, Nana, stop. What is the fruit of these thoughts? And I'm like, okay, fear, anxiety, um, unsettlement, insecurity. He's like, yeah, these are not the fruits of my spirit. This is not from me. And I was like, okay, thank you, Lord. But please, like, help me. Like, help it to stop. It. I just keep these thoughts keep coming. And so um, I just continue to just give to the Lord and give to Blessed Mother. But James, you can come to the video. You got to say hi. Uh, you can <laughs> You're already on the. You're on my channel already. I put the things in the video. I say, put the things in pictures on there. Oh, why are you doing all that? <laughs> For everybody. Anyways, so that's okay. He just started now, but later he'll come. So anyways, um, and I just found myself like, you know, just once again, giving it up unto the Lord. And then this morning, I feel like I just had a breakthrough because for the past three days, every time I pray, that's all I would consume these thoughts and these images of just the future and what things hold. And so finally, I just had a, I got a piece where the Lord, I fell in adoration. He was um, showing me an image of my sister and her um my brother-in-law, they got married by the court, but they're actually getting married in the church um, August, in August. And um, she'd asked me to come, but I told her, like, you know, I wasn't sure um, because of me being here. I don't know if they were release me to go uh, from there, but I'll let her know. She was really disappointed by that. And um, with this young man that she's married to, um, I remember when they first met, I'm, I so judged him. I was so critical of him just his appearance. I was like, uh-uh, this is not her. I don't even know why. Once again, she's just going on with this another guy. You know, this is the first time they just met. He came over to her house and bought her his son. And I just judged him by appearance, you know, which is so wrong now. And um, I found myself, we're about to do Bible study. And so in my heart, I was like, Lord, if he's the one, the one I ask, you know, if he wants to stay for Bible study, let him say yes, if he's the one. That's what I said in my heart. And I was thought for sure, once again, by his appearance, I was like, there's no way this guy's going to want to stay for Bible study. He's going to just, going to flee, you know, exactly what I was trying to do. But initially, then when I asked him, I was like, hey, are, you know, we're going to do Bible study. Do you want to stay? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, huh, okay. And sure enough, at that Bible study, he gave his life to surrender to the Lord. And they've had, you know, like any marriage, you know, ups and downs, but he's really a man of great heart. And my heart's desire when the Lord ordained me, it's like, man, I would love to actually marry them. You must have talked about it. But when she brought it this time, I don't know if she had forgotten about it, you know, but I just kind of tucked away my heart and I gave it to the Lord as a desire of my heart. Like, Lord, if this is indeed you. And sure enough, in adoration, I was just seeing images of uh, myself and just um, leading them and um, ordaining their marriage. But then a sermon started coming and the Lord was just, I knew it wasn't me speaking, like it was just the Lord speaking about his heart for marriage. And I was like, man, this is good. I can write this down, what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing. So I just began to write that down and just gave me so much hope. And I just saw with so many people being touched 
as well just a marriage is being restored and you know uh, those who have broken hearts because of marriage or infidelity in marriage or just broken by betrayal and feel like I can't trust the Lord to trust love again I just saw them staying up for prayer too as well at their wedding you know like just that you know the once again the Lord's presence was so strong and many people just really touched and that really touched me because that's also been my heart especially for my family and marriages in my family it's been really difficult that's a stronghold the enemy has had but not anymore and so this is such a great grace and a great um victory and not only that but just a great um gift from the lord for them to come together to be married the first out of all of my siblings and so um that really just gave me great hope and so much joy and peace and it completely uh, diffused all the thoughts the enemy was putting for me for a future as well and also fears for me that i had of marriage too that's when when eric was really hitting and so seeing that gave me such great hope and such great strength and such great courage and just thanking the lord for those graces and I ask Blessed Mother to throw her mantle upon them as their preparation as they're getting married to as well. And I've been that's why I've been praying even um, for us and for you guys as well that, you know, Blessed Mother throw her mantle upon the church that would all be our hearts and our souls and our bodies to be prepared to birth Christ in this Christmas. A great grace to really allow our hearts to be open and ready to uh, to really be that manger that manger that the infant Jesus can come and rest in. And so that's been my heart and I I really want to be able to uh, connect with the infant Jesus like never before. I've seen so many of the saints have and just going deeper in, um, in intimacy with Jesus. So I've been asking Blessed Mother for that. So I'm going to be praying for you guys for that too as well. That the holidays just, just become super fearless again with all these different things you have to do and the busyness and the gifts and money and all those things that have nothing to do <clears throat> but with really um, Christ and the redemption. And not only that, but there's a grace I really believe the Lord releases every Christmas upon his body for those whose hearts are open as a tabernacle and a manger for him to come and rest. And so that's my prayer. And so that's what happened this morning. And then, uh, you know, me and Brother James are talking about that, just fears and things about marriage. And maybe one of the one days we do a video about that too as well, um, concerning that and uh, sharing that with you guys. But that's what the Lord really put on my heart today, just in worship and in adoration before I do the Lord's Supper. And then um, right when I was about to do the Lord's Supper, then the, the Lord gave me an image. I just saw like, um, I was doing it on my bed. And I just saw like... <clears throat> some pers christians christians being persecuted i just because of my and my heart a part of me is my body was hurting you know the, the way i was kind of lying on the bed do the lord's step i was like man lord that's burning hot because the sunroom here and you know all, all these thoughts i was coming to my mind i was like you know i'm not gonna complain God. i'm just gonna offer this to you you know for those who can't get out of bed you know to go to church get out of bed to do the eucharist i'm gonna offer this to you that's what the thought came to my mind and me that saw like <clears throat> some believers three of them and they're being tortured and like one, the, they'll be on their bed as well, just like in prison. They would fuck their cells in prisons. So they can't really get up or move. But um, as each day, uh, the, the guard would come and get each one and just torture them all day and then get the next one. I just keep rotating, rotating. And those are our thoughts that come to mind. I was like, whoa, Lord, you know where that come from? And immediately as I opened the Lord's Supper, I got, he just speak, spoke on pot, the Book of Wisdom about the just being persecuted. And I was like, wow, Lord, so I feel those confirmations from him. So, um, yeah, and so it's talking about the just being persecuted. And it was talking about the, um, the, the once again, uh, the enemy. It could be human enemies or um, those who just um, despise believers. I'm like, let's transgress this, uh, um, let's transgress this blessed one. Let's transgress him. Um, let's beset him with all type of tortures. Let's beset him with all type of trials and see if uh, the just one will save him. Because he says he's the son of God or he says that he's a, a child of God, let's see if God will deliver him. That's how the scripture went. And so, um, once again, I just felt, when I get that reading a lot, I know the Lord is saying there's a lot of slander or reproach going on, whether it's about me personally or this ministry or just in general, the body of Christ. You know, the enemy is just using so many weak people to cause division, divisiveness, and to cause tests and trials upon uh, the sons and daughters of God. That God has granted his grace for patience and to respond in gentleness. And then the second reading was about James, about where there's jealousy and strife, there's envy, there's all types of confusion. And ungodliness, but this is where wisdom is. Wisdom is first innocent, is docile, is sincere, and impartial. And so, uh, a lot of times, when you ask, you ask amiss because you ask to squander on your own pleasure and you desire for envy and for murder. And so, that's what the Lord's speaking about. And the last uh, reading as well was about um, the resurrection and being the least of all and last of all. And He spoke here where He's speaking to His disciples about, hey, in three days, my enemies are going to overtake me and they're going to kill me, but on the third day, I'll rise up again. And then um, the disciples didn't understand what he meant. However, he went on to say, you know, um, they all started arguing among themselves, like, I'm going to be the greatest in the kingdom. And the Lord spoke to them and said, 
what are you guys speaking of, you know, on our way here? And they got quiet. And he's like, if any of you want to be greatest among, you know, among your brethren, you have to be least of all and servant of all. And whoever receives the, the kingdom, whoever receives me like this little child, not only receives me, but receives the one who sent me. And so that's the reason the Lord gave me. I think in general, I feel like the Lord was speaking, affirming what I saw about the persecuted brothers and sisters all over the world. And many times we can be persecuted here, whether it's by family members, loved ones, or friends, or even by the enemy. Like I said, we never have an enemy. The enemy is, we are fighting against flesh and blood, but it's against wickedness and principalities in high places. And so my desire, the prayer for the Lord's Supper, was to ask for mercy for those torturers, mercy for our brothers and sisters who are just lost in darkness, and recognizing that they're not the enemy. Um, but um, once again, the enemy is using them to bring about persecution persecution among the, the brothers and sisters of God. And then um, that's what I was praying for. And asking the Lord really against also the spirit of jealousy and strife as well and wisdom. And I love what he said in that scripture, that wisdom is sincere, is docile, it's impartial. And, I, and it, it, once again, I'm just relating this as well to marriage because a lot of times um, in the, the, the sermon the Lord was just speaking when I saw this vision or whatnot, was I was talking about just the biggest impediment to marriage was a friend's family and friends. And I think, honestly, the biggest impediment to the Christian walk is family and friends because you're, so you're so attached to them. And what could happen is that you look, on, you look outside of yourself, outside of your union with Christ, to seek wisdom. And when you do that, if the wisdom is not sincere, if it's not docile, if it's not impartial, um, then it's not the wisdom of God, it's the wisdom of man. So you must understand that God's wisdom is not impartial. He never takes sides. He always takes the side of Christ. Anyone who speaks the word of God or speaks in the wisdom of God always takes Christ's side. It's never, if this person's wrong or this person's right. It's always, what does God have to say? What does God think? What does his word say? That's the higher standard and measure. That is wisdom. And it is really, truly is docile. Uh, and it really is impartial. It's not partial to any party and so that's really wisdom so I came to my mind and of course I feel the Lord's remind me again of humility to be least of all and to be servant of all that truly is those who are the greatest and so that's what the readings he gave me I want to share with you guys and then I got flame of cards from that um as well and I feel is affirming these things the Lord is speaking to my heart and what's the same Faustina one my Holy Spirit hmm Mm. Let's be able to find it if you want to read it. Mm. Yay, Lord. You're so good, Holy Spirit. Thank you. So the readings he gave me was to affirm, I think, just um, the fears that he allowed just finally just flee me, you know? And just trusting and being confident in him and his promises and what he spoke concerning what he asked me to do, my future. And, and even now, just having knowing that truly I'm in the palm of his hands and just trusting that. And so I just wanted to share that with you guys. So the first thing I got was, my spirit will help you in your weakness. And I'm like, thank you, Lord, because just being winter and being on the mountain, the snow, um, physically, I've just been feeling just really weary, just tired, you know. And I asked the Lord for strength and going to bless the mother to throw upon her mantle for strength for me. So I'm just glad that he gave me that. And the second one said, I'll pour out my sorrows before him. And Satan's attempt ceased. Jesus then said, the inner peace that you have is a grace. I'm like, thank you, Lord. That's exactly what happened this morning. He gave me inner peace. The, the sorrows that Satan would just put, the attempts he would just put in before me, it ceased when I cried out before the Lord after these three days, you know. And, and thank God for this inner peace, truly. And I love that when, uh, when you're going through a trial situation or test and the God gives you an inner peace, that should let you know to affirm that truly it is the Lord will, is the Lord who's permitting this, and his peace is letting you know that's a test to his faithfulness. That despite what you're feeling, despite what you're seeing, whatever he's promised that he's gonna do that, he's giving you peace about it. So peace truly is a grace for you to sustain you through the trials and tests that he gives you. And that's why the word of God says that he gives us peace that passes all understanding. So the peace is one of the greatest things that great gifts that God can give us. Nothing can t take away nothing. We can find peace in nothing else or no one else but Christ. And so with peace, you can do all things to Christ who strengthen you. Without the peace of God, you, you are, you're just running senselessly or like a rat in a, a will race. And many people are like that in the world. And many believers too as well just continue just going all around trying to find peace in different things. But truly is in Christ. And thank you for this grace because you have to. And I would say that the times when the Lord doesn't give you peace, offer it up to him. 
offer it to him united with um his suffering as well if he doesn't give you peace whatever situation that you're going through because except for three days he didn't allow that peace to overcome you up until now and so that was a great that's a suffering that's a cross that we can offer to the lord um for the salvation of souls so offer it to him when you find yourself in those situations unite yourself with him when you find yourself not having peace until that peace comes that grace he gives you and the last one i got was very small child never doubts his father's love but trusts in him absolutely and I know the Lord continues to grow me and train me and stretch me in trusting in him and absolutely unconditional trust. And that's really what I want more than anything. When you ask that, that means that it comes with experience that grows you in that trust. So I know that um, that just means, once again, more more tests, more trials in order to continue to grow my faith and trust in the Lord. And so, so Father, please forgive me for not fully trusting you. Absolutely, please forgive me, Lord, and continue to grow my trust in you. And then the, the, I got two readings from the book, St. Faustine book, which I mentioned to you guys. And this reading kind of affirmed what me and Brother James were talking about. Because you're talking about just fear is honestly in marriage. And how many times I'm like, Lord, it's okay, you know. If you're not single, if you're just me and you, it's good, you know. Because <laughs> you get to a point where you have all of these, th you know, issues you think about, especially walking with the Lord. And what he permits and allows and crosses and recognizes like, what marriage may become to really teach us and train us in love. You know, sometimes there might be a little bit of fear and repugnant to whatever suffering he may allow. And it just, it's kind of sweet to be in a place where it's you and Jesus and not have to worry about anyone else, their emotions, you know, um, you know, anything like that, you know. So there's, there is a beautiful grace to singleness. There really is. It's really sweet place when you come with the Lord. And so when, you, when we start talking about that, just our fears in our past. So once again, maybe we'll share that in a video later. But the Lord immediately, he's like, you know, imagine Jesus is in this room, you know, and told me that, you know, I would never, you know, get married. I'd be okay with that, you know. And I was like, man, so many times after the Lord, I Lord, if it's just being you, I'm good, you know. And then when he starts talking like, no, I've, you know, called to marriage, all, all these things come to my mind because of what we've seen, what we've experienced in our own lives and even our parents' lives too as well. Sometimes those carry along with us and fear comes. And so I love that when I, me left when we start talking, I opened this book and I feel the Lord answered us and he's talking to Satan Faustina. But I believe like once again, I get Raymond was prophetically speaking directly to us in our situation. And this is what he said to St. Faustina and said to me and Brother James just now. January 14, 1937. Today, Jesus entered my room wearing a bright robe and girded with a golden belt. His whole figure was splendid with great majesty. He said, my daughter or my son, why are you giving to thoughts of fear? I answered, oh, Lord, you know why? And he said, why? This work frightens me. She said, you know that I'm incapable of carrying it out. And he said, why? You see very well that I'm not in good health, that I have no education, that I have no money, and I'm in the abyss of misery, that I fear contacts with people. Jesus, I desire only you. You can release me from this. And the Lord said to her, My daughter, or my son, what you have said is true. You are very miserable, and it pleased me to carry out this work of mercy precisely through you, who are not nothing but misery itself. Do not fear. I will not leave you alone. Do whatever you can in this matter. I will accomplish everything that is lacking in you. You know what it is. You know, you know, what, it, you know what is within your power to do. Then do that. The Lord looked in the depths of my being with great kindness. I thought I would die from joy under the gaze. The Lord disappeared, and the joy and strength and power to act remained in my soul. But I was surprised that the Lord did not want to release me, and that he's not changing anything he has said once. And despite all these joys, there's always a shadow of sorrow. I see that love and sorrow go hand in hand. Amen. So I believe this is exactly what was directing everything we're talking about. These feet of the Lord, I just said, are you sure you caught? Because I know how many times I've said it to the Lord. Are you sure you caught me to marriage? Lord, are you sure about me? Everybody? You know, so all these thoughts like, Lord, are you sure? Like why? And even not marriage, but just the mission that he's called us to, the destiny purpose he has us to. Lord, are you sure they called to carry this out? As was mentioned, like marriage is one of the greatest graces and greatest gifts and highest calling from the Lord is actually a greater grace of sanctification than if you would become a nun or a priest. Is marriage because once again you died yourself to that person to be to really look like Christ and so I love that the Lord just really touching on that like why are you guys fearing why just precisely your fears precisely your weaknesses precisely that your past the things of your past all of these things build you up perfectly to be used as a vessel for me to show my mercy to shine my mercy through and I just want to encourage you guys that to so if anyone's going through a situation where the Lord is asking something and you're like well this is impossible I just I can't I can't do that's a thing that we can't 
we can't do marriage. We can't do any mis- ministry or anything that God has called to, but he can through us. When we give to him our weaknesses, as he mentioned in my rainbow cards, like, Nana, my spirit will help you with your weaknesses. And, you know, we see that scripture all the time. And in our weaknesses, right, so his grace, his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. So that's why he loves to boast in our weaknesses, so that his strength is made perfect. And when people look at us, when whenever God's done with whatever he's accomplished through us, we truly get, he gets all the glory to say, no, it's nothing but God. It's nothing but the Lord because I have no strength in myself to do all these things. And the last reading he gave me is about confidence in him. And the scripture said, I mean, this is, I would say, a spiritual diary. And this is quotes from different saints. And it says here, it is from divine assistance that we must expect the successful outcome of our work. Firmly convinced that whatever happens will always be the best for us. Regardless of whether, in our opinion, it seems good or bad. <laughs> it's like what we're talking about. Walking with Jesus, you have to recognize that the good and bad are what? Is always, always successful. And convinced that whatever happens, that it truly is from him. It really, really is. He permits all things. And truly, he works everything out for our good. So we have to come to that same opinion. And I, I just laughed because I was like, Lord, I'm, I know I'm not there yet. Please help me to come to the same opinion when bad things happen. I'm like, okay, Lord, this is... This is really the Lord's will, and this is for me the outcome is going to be successful. But I really just having confidence, within confidence and complete, absolute trust in the God who created the universe, who created us, who's well of all things. I love the script that keeps coming to my mind is that he satisfies all creatures and food in due times. And that the sparrows, he tells us so many times that we're worth more than the sparrows, that not one sparrow falls on the ground without the consent of the Heavenly Father. If he cares so much about the spirits, then how much us? He knows everything. He he he's the one who feeds the animals. He's the one who gives them the the those who uh, those who are uh, scrolling around the woods and the forest for food. He get he provides the food for them every single day and due season. So that how much more us? We really have to be confident in that. And I know that's a prayer and a grace, my Lord. I want to be so fully confident in the God that I serve, the God that I love, the God who I call my spouse. I want to be fully confident in him. And that's what he's really looking for, for social, complete, confident, helpless in themselves, who are not self-efficient, but completely, fully confident in him. That's what he's calling us to and leading us to, to, to really live lives that way and trust in that way. So I pray that this really encourage you and I just want to pray to you guys as I do all the time continue to pray for our community as we're praying for you guys as well father I lift up my uh, my brothers and sisters Lord God and sons and daughters Lord God I just pray right now Lord for all those who are watching for those Lord God who find themselves in the same situation as I am those who are in a, a value decision or those father God who are just really fighting with trusting you Lord because they've been hurt by things that you allowed or permitted Lord I pray right now a grace father God a grace to wash over them just the grace you gave me a grace to have inner peace Lord God in the situation the sorrows and trials and a grace to call upon you trust in you father God let them let you know all that they're feeling the fears that they have lord god and trusting that in their misery trusting that in their emptiness lord god that you are able to feel that you are able to do in and through them father god more than can bluntly ask for even think lord in the name of jesus we pray so god we thank you for this time we thank you for drawing us closer to you in the name of jesus christ we thank you for raising sons and daughters who love you, Father God, who are fully confident in the God that they serve, the God that they love, O oh Lord God, to live lives confidently in absolute trust in you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Until tomorrow, God willing. All right, bye.